I am about to show you the biggest game of Sudoku ever. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and welcome to the Guts of CFD Part 4, the CFD Linear Solution. So far, we have covered the Navier-Stokes equations, we've covered the basic transport equation, and we have covered the interpolation equations. So that's laid down the basic physics, and that's allowed us to turn those physics from calculus differential equations into algebraic equations that the computer can solve. But now, we have to actually address the question of how does the computer solve that? There are a lot of equations. And that brings us to the issue of the CFD linear solution. So let's get into it. Up to this point, everything that we have talked about has created the math for a single cell. We've had the transport equations, that's our Navier-Stokes and other equations, and we've had the interpolation equations that converted calculus into algebraic equations that the computer could understand. And all of this has said that I've got a single cell and I've got information that I'm getting from my neighboring cells. Well, there's a catch here. We actually know that we don't know the answers for all of these neighboring cells either. Now, that's the part we're going to address. We've had that math for that single cell, and for the moment we've just been ignoring all these neighboring cells. We're going to now take that math for its single cell and replace it for math with millions of cells. We're going to solve all of these cells at once and address all of those relationships at once. We're going to create a matrix of interrelated math problems. One problem for each cell in our mesh. Well, how are we going to solve millions of related math equations? And I do mean millions. Hmm, now I know what the solution is to that one. Linear algebra. The heart of every CFD solver is a very efficient linear algebra solver. And I do mean very efficient. They really optimize these suckers because they are working their butts off. Except we run into a little hitch here. Linear algebra deals with linear equations. CFD equations, though, are nonlinear. We have phi squared, we have d2 phi, d2 phi squared, we have phi x, phi y, we have all these combinations of nonlinear equations here. And that's a problem, because linear algebra doesn't work with that. So how do we deal with that? We're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus here, and we're going to actually create a linear equation from a nonlinear one through some iteration. So if you look off at the right side of your screen here, that grayed out equation, you might remember that's our general transport equation. That's our starting point there. And we're going to start by just shifting all of the phi terms over to the left-hand side. Uh, phi is our general term here. It's, it's our catch-all phrase for whatever the variable is that we're solving for. It can be fluid velocity, it might be pressure, it might be turbulent kinetic energy, whatever it is. Okay, so we shift everything over to the left-hand side. And it's starting to look like we've got some possibilities here. We factor out all of this, and we're trying to actually factor it out so that now we have just Noplify as its own separate matrix here. Uh, gradient, Noplify is the gradient of phi. And what we do is we pull that out, and we treat that as its own matrix. So 1 minus phi minus phi not dot, that becomes its, the A matrix. And suddenly, we have a potential linear solution here. So we have the A matrix, which is a function of the solution. And then we actually have the phi, which is our solution variable. That's the thing we're actually solving for. B, that's our source terms. Okay, that, those are all of our constants. And then we have d phi dt. That's our time variation term. And now, we actually do have something that we can solve for with a linear equation solver. We take an initial guess at what our solution will be for our phi variables. We use that initial guess to form our matrix of coefficients, our A matrix. Don't tell the linear solver that it's actually a nonlinear problem, okay? We get a linear solution. That was our guess, okay? 
take that linear solution, update our A matrix with that. And we just keep iterating like this. Update your A matrix, solve for your solution. Update your A matrix, solve for your solution. Uh, it's not actually that simple. There's actually a fairly convoluted algorithm that you have to do for this iteration called the pimple or the simple algorithm or the simple C algorithm. There's a couple different variations on that. But at the core of it, what you're doing is linear solution, update, iterate. And you just keep doing this. And it doesn't actually take that many times. Uh, typically, you can get to a pretty stable converged solution in five iterations is a typical value. So it's not too bad. And that is how we use a linear solver to solve nonlinear equations in a very efficient manner. Pretty neat, huh? So far we have covered the Navier-Stokes equations. The basic idea behind that is force equals mass times acceleration. Add up all the forces on the fluid and you know where they'll be going. We have our transport equations, which you have to be able to recognize which terms are convective versus diffusive. Well, then we have the idea of finite volume interpolation, which is how we teach the computer to understand calculus. And now to that, we've added the process of how to do linear solutions which is how do we solve a nonlinear problem with a linear algebra solver? And that, the answer to that one is iteration. Hope this has helped you. Thanks very much. I am Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.